This is Damian Macy, representing the Friends of the Marshall Public Library. It is Wednesday, July the 20th of 2016, and today we have the fortunate pleasure of visiting with a couple people who were very instrumental in making this library what it is today. And they can talk about some years and what all was done, but I have with us Daryl E. Smith and Charlotte Moorcraft who were both very active at that time when the library was improved. So with that, I'll introduce you to Charlotte and Tara Lee. Okay. All right, um, I uh, was elected to the city council and not installed yet when mm -hmm. my, I came to his meeting at the library. And Bear Kirshner, who was kind of my mentor on council, said, Charlotte, you told me you're interested in that library maybe you would want to come tonight. And I said, oh yeah. So I, we were sitting in what was there, that room at that point, which wasn't anything like now. And uh, we had had a tour in the beginning of the recently purchased, what was the Western Auto at one time and many other garage. Uh, we had, the city had just recently purchased that building. Charlotte, you said Bear. Now many people Terry, might not know who Terry, Bear is. Terry Clapfeld and he's connected with Kirshner. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had been over there and I was just ooing and aahing about the beautiful metal ceiling they had. You know, it was just gorgeous. And, and then we got into the meeting and they were talking about this and they were talking about their plans. Well, now we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to lower the ceiling and we're going to put wood paneling on the walls because that, that'll match the other part and some other thing. And I'm sitting there, you can't, why? You can't do that. And I kind of sat there just about as long as I could and I finally I spoke up and said, well, but why would you do that? They're beautiful. Well, it'll save on the heating. And I said, well, uh, I'm thinking, I don't mind what you own the utilities, what's your difference? But I didn't say that, but I said, well, have you, do you know, have you, you know, how much difference it would make? And, uh, well, no. And then, uh, uh, let's see, something, it'd just be, just be better, you know, it would all match. Of course, this was not very attractive at all, but it was matching. And so Bear was sitting next to me, and at that time my husband was building an addition on the nursing home. And so they had an architect, and he came from Jacksonville, Illinois. Uh, who was that husband of yours? Fred Moorcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and I could tell you another story about Fred Moorcraft. <laughs> While we're doing this, I met him driving around the Marshall Square. I was with his cousin, and in early 50s, that's what you did. You came to town and you drove around the square. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met Fred. But back to my story. Uh, so I asked Bear, I said, Could, and I had been to Mr. Goley's office uh, to deliver some paperwork prior to this, and he had restored an old building. And in talking with him, he told me that he had also restored the train station there, which was the large train station, and his wife had a restaurant in that building, an Italian restaurant. And what town was that? Jacksonville. Jacksonville? Mm -hmm. But he, and he also said, now it's not in my name, because I didn't know whether she would make a go of this or not, and so it's in her maiden name, and it was an Italian type name. Uh, but anyway, and Bear said, well, it just happens, he's coming tomorrow. And so I said, well, would he come and look at this? Oh, yes, he'd be glad to come and look at this for us. And the different things, and oh, besides the heating, um, God had to send me some messages because there were things I absolutely didn't know about. But they had already decided they wouldn't be able to use the upstairs unless they did major shoring up and didn't have the money at that time because it just wasn't strong enough to have a lot of books and books and, and lots of people. So uh, he, uh, I said, well, if you're not going to use it, could you put insulation up there? And this would help save on the heat. 
and there was some other thing. There were three things that I came up with, but they're not here today, but <laughs> might later. Uh, and when he made, talked to us, he said all those three things. And what was his name, Charlotte? Mike Golis. Golis? Uh -huh. And um, so, Darley, and then when I said this in the meeting, uh, the president of the library board at that time said, well, truthfully, nobody but you and Darrell Lee's even cared or said anything about it. Mm -hmm. So we became fast buddies <laughs> at that point. And so when I went home, I kept thinking about, it. you know, really, I was kind of an outsider when I came on the council. They, you know, they had their buddies they worked with. And the only reason I ran, really, was because he was always out of town. And he wasn't ever at the meetings because his work was somewhere else. And so I thought, that's just not right. And I had been on lots of committees and clubs and everything my whole life and kind of thought, you know, it'd be nice maybe to be on something where you got paid. I don't care how much, <laughs> but just the idea you're going to get a little bit of payment. So then I ran for election and did win. Well, of course, some of them knew me, some didn't know me at all, so they didn't know about having this woman. They hadn't had a woman on, the, well, they'd had two in the past. One was Belva Turner, who was a go-getter, very sharp, and uh, the next one, really the only re reason she ran was because they were going to put some, uh, they were working on ordinances having to do with trailers, and she lived in a trailer. I won't use her name, but uh, wasn't really the material, probably, but so uh, then, when I, you know, was elected and, and had a good time with that. Um, then after I got home, I thought, you know, I know those people, that ladies that live in the north end of town that really like historic things. They would like to have that ceiling like it is too. I'm just going to call a couple of them up and have them call some friends. And so I called uh, Kate, who was on the board, and then uh, Meeling, and I called Peggy Morrison. Well, Peggy's the one I think really got on the phone. Uh, next time I saw Jim Swartz, he said, you know a lot of people in town, don't you? I said, well, yeah, several. They all been calling me, Charlotte. <laughs> so also then, at the time we got had got we got our architectural digest and I had just recently got their catalog of metal ceilings, four metal ceilings and ten ceilings. So I looked at the prices and I called them, told them, you know, the price of our building and how much would it cost to put that in? Um, and it was astronomical. And of course then I talked to Bear and how much is the the uh, suspended ceiling going to cost to put in. And that was a very large amount of money too. And so then, you know, I had these kind of some figures and stuff. Well then, uh, I don't know, after that, kind of some of them just jumped on the band, bandwagon. And though at, at this point, not too long after that, a few weeks, Jim Swartz, who had been like the council coordinator with the city hall and kind of was going to do this. He came up and said, Charlotte, would you, want, would you do that? Would you be the coordinator for the library? And I thought, well, I don't know. I have to think about that. So I went home and I talked to Fred and he said, well, you can do it. And of course he had done both, he'd been worked with both state and federal jobs. So he familiar, was familiar with their rulings. And, and he said, I'll help you out on anything you need. So that's how I became. Charlotte, was this ceiling open in here no. at that time? This ceiling had a lower oh. ceiling and oh. also the vent work. They, mm -hmm. they needed the ducts. Well, I had happened to be not only at his office, but I'd gone to the Clabber Girl. And then I saw the spiral duct work that was used in those buildings. Well, they weren't. 
I don't think had even seen it, any of them anywhere. So that was part of, that was one of the other things that God told me about that day. <laughs> and uh, so then as the library progressed, and I'll tell you more about this part, uh, then uh, when uh, we were, we had Casemeyer come and they were doing some plastering work and, and doing that. That was Tom Casemeyer at that time. And he was patching things and we kind of, we had the bathroom roughed out. For some reason George Smith was here at the same time as I was. And I guess they'd had to tear out something and then change, to change the walls. And we were sitting on the back stairway and looking through there, it was open then, but this was still in here. And so look at that ceiling, Charlotte. Look what's in that other part. Oh, yeah. Don't you think maybe you ought to talk to him about changing that part too? <laughs> Taking that out. I said, oh, I don't know. Of course, they'd already, at the time when we were building that library, they had decided they wouldn't do the windows for a couple or three years. And I'm thinking, you know, you've already, you're going to have it all nice, done it, and they're going to tear it up again just to do the front windows, which it needed. Um, you're talking about the first floor windows? Yes, on the first floor, yes. Hmm. So then I had talked to him, got him, got him to agree to, um, well, maybe we better go ahead and do it all at one time. I don't remember how much the windows cost. I know when we were going to take down the ceiling in here and the repainting and the plastering and something else was going to be about $1,500. So we got that. They finally they agreed to that. I think they were so tired of hearing from me that they just gave up. Uh, then one time during when we were well, kind of like painting, staining woodwork, and some of that was going kind of slow. So Daryl Lee had talked to uh, George, her husband, would you loan me some guys for a week? It was winter, and the guys, you know, they were looking, would some of them come for a week? And yes, he did. And so Daryl Lee, she had already engineered what job she needed done, and they did that. Yeah, you were on the library board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was just going to tell you briefly a little bit, a little bit about me, as far as um, growing up always here in Marshall, and remembering going up those creaky wooden stairs yes. to the old library, and it was just like a, a finding buried treasure, <laughs> you know, to go into that mm -hmm. library. So yeah. I've always loved reading, and uh, as a child, I couldn't decide whether to be a teacher or interior designer. And I asked my grandma what, she asked me what I wanted to be and I said, I think an interior designer. And she said, oh, be a teacher. And those words stayed with me for a long time. But throughout other aspects of my life, I've been able to kind of enjoy both of those worlds. And I, I happened to be um, honored to be asked to be on the library board. And um, at that time we were, we had the meetings in this, this part that we're in here. Uh, yeah. a little farther back and um, kept, the discussion came up that we might be able to either go this way or this way because mm -hmm. both sides were empty which was yeah. would have been Martin's Drug Store mm -hmm. and Western Auto yeah. and of course I kept saying let's go both ways <laughs> can we get both buildings you know but as it turned out we didn't get Martin's Drugs but we got the Western Auto building which was much fabulous larger. fabulous building and um, so um, they asked me if I would be the representative from the library board. And it worked out really well because I was on uh, medical leave that year. So um, Charlotte and I Got to had a wonderful time <laughs> because this was right up our alley. Mm -hmm. And um, I have always loved uh, historic preservation and those kinds of things. So I was thrilled that, you know, she had talked them into the Ten ceilings. I can't look at them enough. They're so beautiful. And um, we, um, some of the things that um, I that stand out in my mind was that um, 
Ken, well, Kenny Smith was on the council yes. at the time, and my husband George was um, the director of public works, and um, they played a big part in this behind yeah, the scenes in getting these kind of things done. And uh, George actually found out about the grant, and uh, we almost lost the grant, but mm -hmm. um, he he acted on it and, and it got taken care of. Okay, so. tell us more about the grant, because I called Bear and that's what I'd called him, because I'd kind of forgotten about the grant. Huh? <laughs> um, George could probably tell you better about that, okay. about okay. that information, but um, anyway, we did, we did get the grant. And really, was there a concern of we will do X, Y, and Z and it cost if we get the grant, and if we don't, we won't do them? Was that ever an issue? I don't think we could have done it without the grant. Well, we okay. couldn't have done a lot that we did. What we've no, done, no. Was no. this a private grant you're talking about? We almost missed the uh, deadline for it. But um, anyway, as it turned out, um, also Kenny had contacted um, um, Dennis, Jones, Dennis Jones, Dennis Jones, and um, he was very gen He gave a very generous yes, donation, did. and um, I think it was Evelyn Knowles, perhaps, mm -hmm. that gave the donation for the circulation desk. Okay, from her. Mm -hmm. I was trying to remember this yeah. morning, and I couldn't remember. Yeah. So. Um, Dennis Jones didn't ask for anything uh, for the donation, but um, we wanted to honor their family, you know. Well, for, he wanted a small pack, a plaque to honor his yes. parents, his and Judy's parents. That's all he asked for, yeah. yeah. So we did that little corner over there with the fireplace and the, the couches yeah. and everything to honor them. And then um, I was friends with Tracy and Randy McGinnis, and I asked Tracy if she thought that Randy could design a circulation desk, you know, because normally he did smaller things. Mm -hmm. And she said, sure he could. And, <laughs> and he could. <laughs> and he did. Um, and at the board meeting, we, dus we discussed the fact that the people who work in the library needed to be a part of that because they know day, you know, day to day what drawers they need, what shelves they need, those kinds of things. So they worked all together, you know, in designing that uh, circulation desk, and I think it turned out beautifully. The um, one of the concerns was the 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 shelving. The shelving was just um, old, those older metal shelves with the open ends, and it was going to cost quite a bit to replace all those shelves. So. Um, I thought, why couldn't we just put wood, stained wood, and put them on the ends and make them look like wooden bookshelves, you know, just kind of surround them. Mm -hmm. So so that is what we ended up doing. And um, I thought they turned out oh, beautiful. really nice. And we have the city workers to thank for staining and yeah. working. And um, Leela Pancake had introduced me to the boxcar children. And throughout my years of teaching, the children just, to this day, talk about the Boxcar Children series and how much they loved it. So we um, had the city workers, and Jerry Bass was, I think, the basic yeah. designer for it. Yeah. Uh, and all the guys worked together and built that boxcar that's in there with some funding that was given to us from the um, yeah. VFW. Mm -hmm. And um, the, I had just recently gone to community theater and they had done uh, the secret garden and they had give they were getting rid of the tree and mm -hmm. the bushes mm -hmm. and those kind of things so uh, I asked if we could have those so they donated to us all of that some of it's still here some mm -hmm. of it some of it's not the tree's still here but um, and then they were going to change that with the seasons was was the plan plan in the children's little children's corner with the box car and, and that. Um, when my mother passed away, we um, we decided to donate the money that was given at um, at her funeral to the friends of the library, mm -hmm. and that's when we bought the furniture in the little magazine area. And her name was? Uh, Rogene Harlow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely been a work in progress and it's just continued to be more and more beautiful. 
Um, one thing uh, that I'm very proud of, the, um, the big cases back here. Um, my dear friend Kay Woodard was an artist and, uh, and an art teacher, and she had passed away. And the money that they had donated, um, the family decided to um, give to the Friends of the Library. So since she was an artist, um, I was in search of a display case for uh, artwork of different things, just different things of interest. And, we've, and uh, Jim Knowles told me about Paris, in Paris, mm -hmm. um, they, that used to be the display cases for the shirts and men's shirts and ties mm -hmm. and things, I, but I can't Layman's. remember the, was it Layman's? Layman's, Layman's, Layman's yes, would have yes. been there. Yeah. So that's where that came from. And Randy McGinnis um, cleaned it all up for us and had the special lighting put in it. He did all that for us. Um, Let's see. Oh, and it was so fun for Charlotte and I. We would, we went on different shopping sprees, and <laughs> well, we went to Bill Grove. Oh yeah. To look at that library, yes, we had we been told what a nice library they had. They had recently redone theirs, uh -huh. and how comfortable. In fact, the mayor of Bill Grove was for Marshall. I don't know what his name is now. Yeah, he's Fred's friend. Well, we would go up upstairs, and there was a lot of. Um, furniture and, and things, and we tried to refurbish a mu as much of that as we can, good. Yeah. Tables and chairs and that little small display case that's mm -hmm. right when you very first come in the door. Well, and that was the cigar humidor. The, from? The small one. That was upstairs, that one in front. It was from here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mark Green told us, because we he came and would get a few pieces at a time and then mm -hmm. do them for us and bring them back, and he said, you're you just won't believe what that was. And we said, well, yeah, it's a display case. No, it was humidor for cigars. So anyway, that was kind of like a treasure hunt up mm -hmm. there also. Oh yeah, we had the most fun with we that. that. And then we went to Galloway's one day and took old pictures and had those yeah. copied um, to hang. Yeah. And um, all the windows. Um, we wanted some kind of stained glass in, in here. And um, Charlotte knew um, the guy Nessel, on- Jim Nessel Road. Yes. On Second Street. On Second Street that he did that. So we met with him and had him design the windows that are at the top um, to make it look like it's a stained glass window even though it's mm -hmm. just a panel. And then I talked to all the building contractors, kind of saying them into it probably. <laughs> that a hundred, we'd need, would like $150 from each one, and that would pay for the glass, which Jim gave us a very special rate, and we would have their name on a plaque right by the front door, and it's still there mm -hmm. with their name. And, all the, and we were very fortunate. We wanted our work done by local contractors mm -hmm. as much as we could, but, I mean, you know, this is project you have to bid. We couldn't just, but very fortunately, they all came in. And one of the exciting things, we had gotten a bid from two pl or two local plumbing contractors. Well, for some reason, we they had to rebid it. I don't know why. But when we got the second rebidding, the one contractor, his was probably about half of what he told us before, which was pretty close to the first one. So I had gone over and talked to him. I said, you know, this is just a big difference. And we want to be sure that, you, you know, you have what you're supposed to have in here and you're getting what you need. He said, well, basically, Charlotte, I had a lot going at that time and I really didn't plan it out. And I just slapped it together. And when I really had to do it again, I could come up and I wanted to. He said, I wanted to come up with a better figure for the library. and so. Uh, which gave us several thousands of dollars that we did. Extra. And Daryl and I were pretty, Daryl Lee and I were pretty good spending it. <laughs> to, to go back just a little bit, when was the building actually purchased? And then when did you actually start on this renovation project? Well, it was purchased right prior to that starting, I think, don't you? I don't think they had it very long. Yeah. 
I, I can't. I don't know exactly I because I wasn't here. there when they purchased it. But my understanding was they got a chance to buy it mm -hmm. and uh, acted on it fairly quickly. So you're. Pitching into this was really 1995. Then yes, when you started? yes, that's when we started. It would have been because I would have been installed in May of '95. And, uh, Did you have a timeline that you say I want this done by such and such? Well, to just go along with normal flow. Well, work? yeah, just I mean I think the contractors were all good, and we you know they worked around each other to get the work done. Uh, but I don't think they didn't say we had to have it done by a okay. certain time, no. We did have an offer for a large amount of money, well about the same as what our one that we got from Mr. Jones, because he had given us stocks in, in their company, which you called me and let me know every day how much they were. and uh, um, but. Uh, in fact, I wondered when they had Martha Stewart's thing, if I might be, because I had happened to call, and I, and I would call Dennis and Judy every once in a while, and I'd send them pictures of what was happening. And uh, I had called him that day to tell him something, and he said, have you checked on your stock today? And I said, well, no. Well, you, I said, Damien calls me, well, okay, but you want to be sure and take that call today. So I might have been Martha Stewart. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> and some <laughs> trading information. <laughs> and now it's on tape. <laughs> yeah, now it's on tape. Well, I think uh, it's I think a statute of limitation. <laughs> I think it's gone. probably long enough. Weren't the painters uh, Bloodworth painting? Yes, yes. I, I, I was just admiring how yes. beautiful that still yes. looks. Yeah. Uh, I think they've had some repainted in, the, in 20 years. Kept the same yeah. color. Yes, the local contractors, I wrote them down. I think I got everybody. John Alexander, oh, yeah. uh, Tim Bloodworth, he had this paper, uh, Schalberg Plumbing, uh, Terry Stephen, uh, Bob Erlbacher, uh, Tom Case Meyer, I think that's probably all of them. Did uh, any of you select these colors, or was there a committee that did that in addition yes, to this? A committee of two. two. That's yes, one. yes, yes. The, in fact, one of the librarians at one point in one day, they truthfully, and I probably don't want you to put this out, they kind of worked against us all the time. We had to work around them. In fact, with the library board, I had talked to them, and we had all met together here. And I told them, I said, I need to meet with you. We need to have a meeting. They said, okay, we're going to go. No, we can't go to the library. We need to go out to uh, Crossroads, to the restaurant, because you know, you're the ones that are responsible for this, because you're the committee. The librarians are just here. And so, uh, you know, we need to meet someplace else so that we can talk. Well, as an example, when we were, uh, when Tim and I had met up here on a Saturday, and we were looking, and, and I showed him the back corner. I said, now, we, you know, we'd like to do something special for the kids. I don't know if, you know, we need want to do something with painting. Uh, to m make them, when they come to the library, they know where their spot is. So that their moms can are free to go look at the books or do what they, they want, and they'll know their spot. So I came over to talk to the librarian and tell her. I said, well, you're probably wondering what we were doing. And uh, Tim was here, and, and we were, and I told him we wanted to have a special area for the children. And she put her hands on the desk just like this. Please, please, please don't do that. And I kind of stood there a minute and I said, well, you know what happens here really kind of falls back on the library committee and the city council. And that's really who's gonna be you know, held responsible. Did you get an answer why? 
No. <laughs> but they didn't, but she also then said, well, you know, we didn't even get to pick the paint color. We don't like the color they painted over there. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think those kind of things have, sometimes happen when um, people don't feel that they're maybe included, you yeah. know, and it, it had been their be. own. Some people are a little resistant to change. Librarians sometimes. are kind of. And they were used to it being kind of this okay. way, you know, and they didn't really, um, I don't think, we probably should have included them more in we some tried. of the meetings and conversations we tried, and stuff. Dearly. It's kind of a you're sense very, of ownership. You're, so. you're very nice, <laughs> but we tried. And it was to the point. But, you know, she didn't like the paint color. Well, primarily, I didn't either. It was red. And they had just put on one coat of paint. And, of course, the red was still bleeding through yet. It didn't have the next coat of paint on there. So. <laughs> one thing I wanted to mention was... Um, Dale McConkey was the uh, president during mm -hmm. that time of the library board. Had and been several years, wasn't he? Yeah, he had been. And so this was kind of um, very important to him. And sadly, you know, we lost him during that time. And mm -hmm. um, that's why this room is named after him, the Dale yeah. McConkey meeting room. Yeah. And it was also during this time that we started the Friends of the Library. And um, at that time, it was very informal, pretty much mm -hmm. informal little group and um but got some things you know rolling and 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 it was um and i'm thrilled to know that it continues today mm -hmm. i do remember that uh, eleanor mackey um had input on uh, these posters she wanted the posters that are here in the um del mcconkey meeting room well i had specifically because in our grant because part of it was state somehow related because a certain percentage was allowed for art work. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Judy and Elner, because oh, okay. I knew Elner was very good at that, and, mm -hmm. and Judy, I had specifically asked them to take care of the pictures mm -hmm. for this room and, and out in the hall. Did you request originals? Uh, whatever they could get, whatever they could get. Yeah, I don't no, think the grant was that big. No, no, no just so. whatever they could get. I remember and, also. And the, the other rooms where the originals are. Yeah. And, and back to those paintings talking about, it's kind of funny because, you know, a lot of times they're up around. And I have. I had a friend call me one day and she said, Have you been to the library? And I said, Well, yeah, I go about every week. Have you looked around? I said, well, no. Really, I've gone in, got my two books, and I've gone out. Well, you know, somebody has painted something, and they think you don't like it because you have not mentioned it. And Eleanor Mackey had painted a picture of my house. Oh, and and you hadn't was, seen it? It was sitting up above the cabinets where they put them, and no, I had come in, gotten my two books. I, said, uh -oh. I will be sure and get up there today. Oh, I Unbeknownst see that. to I me, it. yeah. Is it still, still here? No, it's at my house. Oh, you bought it? <laughs> no, I had to buy it. She made it for me, <laughs> but I didn't know she was making it oh, for me. Nice. So, how no. Nice. Well, that's something else I want to mention. Um, even after Kay had passed away, we um, we had made the little um, area for the artists to display mm -hmm. their work, yes. and um, we did do a display of Kay's work. Mm -hmm. um, there and some of our pottery and things in the in the cases and dedicated the cases. So, well, mm -hmm. I love I love that part. Oh, me. Too. Well, it's just I. It's such nice, and they have different paintings up there all the mm -hmm. time. All the time, so the yeah. local people can be recognized. Kind of aside from the architecture and all, do you recall or know about how many books were in the library? But it was in just in this room. Uh, no, I don't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. To know. Very confining, obviously. We uh, thought it was long and narrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long yeah. And it went back a lot further. Oh yeah. And the bathroom was back behind. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was on an outside wall, and they had trouble with the bathroom freezing water freezing down. in the winter, mm -hmm. so they had to have a heater in there. But some you look back on it was kind of shabby in comparison, but <laughs> not kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, you know, we, we, I always felt like we were lucky. We've been lucky to have oh, a library, even when it was up above yeah. my the kids. chamber office, we, which was there. Like, I can remember taking my little kids up there, and I can remember when they'd moved into this building. 
and we were coming, and, and one, of the, one of them would ask me, ask me on the way, and Mama, is this the day when the nice lady's there, or is it that other oh, lady? Oh, dear. <laughs> well, they were Mrs. Davidson mm -hmm. west of town and, and Mrs. Dewey, and Mrs. Dewey wasn't real nice. In fact, I know once Molly, I had parked the car, and she was probably third grade or something, but she needed something for school so, to go along with what she was doing. And of course, she jumped out of the car and gone to come in, and so I was kind of just inside the door. She was back at the desk, and she very politely asked for information about whatever her subject was. And Mrs. Dewey started out not very nice until she saw me. And then her voice just changed so nicely. She got up and got things for her. I can remember going up those dark, dingy, mm -hmm. narrow stairs, too. Mm -hmm. And a friend of my mother's at that time was a part-time librarian. It was Catherine Arney. Mm -hmm. That was Vaughn Arney's mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much she worked there, but I know I always liked to go when she was there. She yeah. was just so outgoing and so cordial if had any questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was very nice. One other thing I wanted to mention, um, as I'm sitting here looking at the mm -hmm. uh, staining and things, I think the city workers did do such an awesome job. They did. And I wish I had a list of the names. I know Harold Anniker was on the city well, manager Hargis. at base. Jim Hargis. Jim here. Hargis, yes, that's right. Um, uh, okay. Oh. I can't think who else was here then. I think maybe, I, I can't remember I think maybe Brad Mars probably worked on it. And of course it was winter time, so unless mm -hmm. it was snowing and they were doing that, you know, they were kind of looking for work mm -hmm. for them, keep them busy. So it worked out perfect, and, mm -hmm. and, and they did a beautiful job. Yeah, they did. They kind of grumbled at us and act like, you know, <laughs> they wanted us to make sure we appreciated, which was fine. We just jazzed it back at them. We did appreciate yeah. it. Bill. With the floor covering, was there a choice of going with tile or wood or carpet or? I don't remember that. You must no, have. I think we just with the no, quality of indoor and out of carpet they have now. We just Terry Stephen worked with us, and this is what he recommended, and it did, it has done pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yes, really mm -hmm. well. In fact, we have in our downtown apartment upstairs we have this carpet. And every once in a while, Fred will say, you know, it's probably time we ought to get a new carpet. Well, when it's empty, I go look at it. And I, well, you know what? The library got theirs the same year we got ours. And they're still using it. But they ain't broke, no fix it. <laughs> and so if we have to, you know, when they get a new one, we'll think about it. Well, where was this, or how was the decision organized of, hey, we've got this building where the library used to be. How are we going to use it? Did that discussion come up and well, that was, how was it going to be? It, truthfully, <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking that we thought we wanted, when they were going, I don't know, this would have been probably after us, might have been discussed before. They wanted to have a meeting room yeah. in here okay. and they needed more public accessible restrooms. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's. Mainly. Another thing I just happened to think of was um, I had always loved the old buildings, um, like the Booth Building, which is, is now the, I don't know what it is now, but it was the Hearing Aid Warehouse for a while. They, it used to have the most awesome windows mm -hmm. and uh, display windows, and I always loved a display window, yeah. just like Macy's. Oh, Mrs. Bosinger was in there. Wasn't she? I think so. Years and her ago. models, because her models were mannequins. Yeah, were kind of almost homemade. They were like, well, like we all get it, or lots of us get it, sixty or something, you know, kind of droopy and thick <laughs> and heavy. And I mean, I'd never seen, you know, I didn't know her. I'd never seen her. And I thought, boy, those are the strangest models, you know. Tell us all Mrs. Bo saying that just exactly her shape. That's funny you bring that up because my dad owned that building for a while yeah. and my friends and I bought a skeleton key at Caldwell's and broke into the building and pretended we were models in those windows 
but we got caught in those windows oh. and it was like a hundred degree day and we couldn't get out of the window <laughs> so somebody shut the door oh, and so Ed Toomey was walking by and he kicked out the glass in the oh, yeah. and I was terrified because I thought I'm going to be in so much trouble yeah. <laughs> and you know it was years before my friend admitted she said well I didn't know it would lock when I shut it she always said she didn't uh -huh. shut it <laughs> yeah. and but we were pretending we were mannequins, mannequins in there. yeah yeah, anyway, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. a neat display I had been window. out of town. The bee board and yeah. all that. It was. I had been. Beautiful. I was out of town when hearing aid people did that. And when I got home on my telephone, I had about ten messages. Have you been uptown and looked at it? Well, no. I came in on Route One. Too bad. Yeah. This one time was Will Fawn's clothing store. Here, yes. Mm -hmm. I, this was. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten that. that. Because I remember when the fall got around and I got clothes, new clothes for school. First went to Grabenheimer's, I got a new pair of shoes and usually blue jeans. And then came down to Will Fonds and usually got two new shirts. And then for afterwards, Mill Mill Fonds were across the street yeah. and it was gift shop. Yeah. 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 Did they have a display window when it was Will Fonds? Mm -hmm. Oh, did. yeah. Well, that was, this was our attempt to make a display window mm -hmm. for um, monthly yes. things of interest to the community. As I recall it was a central door with the windows coming at an angle. Mm -hmm. It was very like, narrow. Yeah. Typical yeah. retail store. Yeah, well, I love, I've always loved that. So that was our attempt to yes. try to give a display. And it's, it's done well. Uh -huh. there I love looking in a very it. good idea person. <laughs> Well, I think people we coming could, into we town. We probably could have uh, gone into interior decorating, you know, <laughs> after we got fired from got let go of this non-paying job. People coming into town today and visiting the library are always very, I think, surprised and impressed at such a small town. We do have such a beautiful and efficient library. Mm -hmm. Well, we were very fortunate in getting a coordinator. I mean, you know, the librarians were busy. They didn't have the time, honestly, to develop the programs and what has happened with the library since. And uh, Nancy Claypool did a wonderful job and, you know, help us help the library not just be a play, the library. It's, it's an activity center. Well, and we've had a lot of volunteers. I was just th sitting here thinking that of all the, the people who have given up their time and energy and talents for the library and it just continues to get better and better. Yeah. Just like the, the room in the back, that wasn't finished at that time. No. This, well, this was not here, the um, um, the cabinets with the little uh, refrigerator and sink yeah. here in the meeting room. No. You know, that wasn't here at that no, time. And, and people just continue to contribute and help mm -hmm. and yeah. that's the beautiful thing about Marshall. Yeah. There's lots of people that have an interest. Today, here now, I guess I didn't realize that 20 years have gone by since this was all started. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked back and said, gosh, I wish we had done anything you had done differently if you're coming back or could go back? I don't think I've ever thought that when I came in. I just kind of, wish, I kind of wish now we had this other building. I mean, because we've done so well. And when we have meetings, I mean, group special things sometimes, it is really crowded in here. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish we... In could. this meeting room? Yes. I mean, yeah. that's really need a much good larger. place. But we wish, because we do have such good activities. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised because several years after, long time after the library started, uh, a group of my parish friends, we started getting together just once a month. And I don't know, I said something about the library, and two of them said, yeah, we've been to your library. Boy, is it nice. Uh, You've been to my library? Yeah, you have good stuff down there. You have good programs. We come down. Mm -hmm. And so then about that same time, Paris got a grant, did things to their library. And when I went in, I was real disappointed. They really hadn't changed much. Yeah. They'd added on the back. They yeah. have an elevator, elevator, which they didn't have before. And so, but as far as anything else, it's about like it was much, when I was uh, in high school. Much architectural improvement. Or mm, I think it's just about life. the same in, when I was there. And we did uh, receive the Wabash Valley Award. Yeah. Um, yes. I, what year was that? I don't know, they're just out there somewhere hanging. Yeah. We did for it and for our park, both the same year. 
Uh, in fact, I had taken the... That was an honor. I had taken the photographs for both of those, and when I had taken to Galloway's to have them developed, the, when the guy that developed, he said, what kind of camera do you have? I, I said, well, I bought it from here, and it's this. He said, this one. He said, that is, was so perfect. The mortar in the brick, everything, that was so perfect. And he said, what time did you date? I said, well, probably truthfully, about 5.30 or 6, because that's the only time I could get to the library when there weren't any cars on the street. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. The lettering um, on the front of the library mm -hmm. at first was um, a little bit of controversy because um, some is a little scrolly and some mm -hmm. people weren't sure if they would be able to, to read, read it. what it said. I, I do remember that. I've forgotten that. And there was uh, some discussion about the lighting, um, preferring oh, a yes. different light. Yeah. You know. That's okay. No, that's fine. We didn't. And, we didn't. And know. It worked out. And they worked out. But we. Well, I mean, us. We were flying by the seat of the pants. I mean, as far as it, you know, we just took what our electrician said would be good. Mm -hmm. There's always technological we improvements over mm -hmm. time. Yeah, we didn't know to research library light. Probably, I don't know for sure. I doubt it. And so we just, he said, this will work well, and it kind of looked kind of like old fashioned, so I thought it was okay. Well, and we were able to change it when the time came, and yeah, that's, but. Uh, I'm proud of it. I love it, and I I'm trying to think when you said that. I guess, I guess one thing that, that would have been kind of neat is if we could have used the upstairs for something well, special. Well, and possibly at some point. You know, I mean, over at at Harlan Hall, we had to have uh, beams, big beams, put across to make mm -hmm. that upstairs usable for the amount of people. So mm -hmm. it's not saying it couldn't probably happen. Mm -hmm. It's just at that time we didn't have the money for it to happen, and they the didn't meeting room over it. this at one time was used. I think I saw a picture of that. Yes, I mean, mm -hmm. I remember some meetings attending. I don't remember now what all it was. But I mean, there's paneling up there, and it was it was finished. It was a nice uh, nice meeting room. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know you've got the handicap problems and all of that yeah. stuff anymore. Yeah. Uh, this would have been back. I'm going to say probably early '90s. In the '90s, oh, I don't. So late '80s, maybe mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Well, the time when we were doing stuff up there, it was pretty. It was just storage when mm -hmm. there wasn't any. So this was. I'm, yeah, they had they a just, treasure trove. Yeah, I mean they <laughs> they had gotten rid of the good antique furniture and put up the you know. Plastics. Got that plastic. And, and, they, and they also had, I would say, every typewriter that had been used. And because there was this whole big row of different years. You could tell, I mean, oh yeah, that's what that, yeah, oh yeah, that's what they had when I was in high school. That Remington <laughs> learned type on that. Uh, yeah, a whole thing. Well, there was one item up there that we found that I don't know that anyone's ever figured out what it was. And they even put it in the paper. And, and we had it downstairs a while, didn't uh -huh. we? Say, so, do you know what this it is? It looks you know? like kind of a rack. rack Some kind of rack. Kind of thing. Did yeah. you, have you seen it? It I may not still not. be yeah. here. Well, I, I don't, don't know, know, but they did bring it down just in the last couple years. Oh, have they? It was dead. Brought it again? Uh -huh. And do you know what that. this is? And nobody well, knows. For nobody but you might. <laughs> if you yeah. ever get to see it. <laughs> when you did this, did they still have the card files? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. What's well, a card file? I know. No one knows. Well, down at West Union, that's what they're still using. Because my oh, sister in law, yeah. whose husband died, she's been busy down. She's taking so much time a week to go and get these updated. And when she first said, I thought, what's she talking about? Because, you know, how long it's been here, we haven't yeah. had card files. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's that place. But she'd been going through there. So. That's is how there you found the book. Is there something that you um, wish that we had here or that you think of when, when you're here that you think would be? I guess the one thing would be a larger, maybe grandiose meeting room mm -hmm. because I can think of several things I've attended here. Allison set up all kinds of chairs, and one time there were people even sitting along here and out the door. Mm -hmm. Really needed 
when we had the handy writers colony uh, that's the way that one was Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i forgot i tend to come because i've heard jim speak so i guess that would be one one nice thing Mm -hmm. if we had that and that's where i keep telling and bugging allison a little bit (laughs) upstairs Mm -hmm. there's a space there and Mm -hmm. it can be done Mm -hmm. i know it takes yeah yeah well and really i mean it wasn't when we were talking about meeting room or it was the load bearing on that site that larger building of having a lot of people and lots of books i don't think anything was even thought of this one but that used to be car dealership there were cars oh, yeah. parked upstairs yeah oh, and so it was that, uh, but that's an awful lot of years ago they I know it. and cars are weren't so big like they, they got now. smaller again oh yeah yeah when we got yeah. the building the, Part of the ramp was still the there. Ramp, yeah, it was paint. Yeah, it was the real wall was red and green. That's in one of those pictures too of that stuff that I haven't found yet. But Edie told me I had a month because it's going to be in October when they're going to rent it. When they're going to what? When they will have this in the paper or whatever they oh. do with it. Mm-hmm. And so my Paris friends are all busy talking about Marshall because they get it on Channel Three. Oh, because okay. Eastern did that. Well, see, we don't have ten or three, or on we don't, I don't. and no, I get Vincent. But when they were first, I thought, what are they talking about? That talking about the W E I U, the mm-hmm. Eastern. When they this came, this is our down. town, or this yes, is Marshall uh-huh. our town. Yeah, and it's yeah. they were they came down because Fred was having surgery that day because I was scheduled to talk about Main Street, and I really wanted to because you know the younger people they don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. they weren't involved. And they wanted me to also, <laughs> but I said, well, you know, my husband's having surgery and I just can't. So. Well, as you had to get very well, but Marshall's they, but, very, very fortunate. But the only thing they wished that they had on there and, and had been advertised was what Marshall was famous for, with the porch highways cross and the porch Which lights burn all night. And that wasn't mentioned, I guess, in that at all. Uh, Mm-hmm. Well, they had asked George to be a part of that, but we weren't going to be home in time. Yeah. So I hated well, that because he might have said that. <laughs> well, and he may have. But, uh, yeah. But I, well, I've enjoyed visiting this, and even though I was aware of a lot of it, I learned some things too. And these interviews are not necessarily for tomorrow or next week, but for the future. Someone is going to look at this and listen to it and say, gee, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the nice thing about the oral history. Yeah. It's getting it in a form that people can listen to and learn in the future. Well, thank you. So it's been a delight us. having you. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you thought of that you would yeah. want to add to the add to the fray? Well, if we wanted to put, I did think when Daryl Lee, after she was talking about the memorial donations and uh, the computer carols, whatever they're yeah. called, uh, those were bought, purchased with uh, money from George Hanks when he died. Hmm. Barbara was kind of thinking, and I said, well, I can make a suggestion if you can do it or not. Mm-hmm. And so they were purchased with that money from George's death. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Mm-hmm. It's been you. a real pleasure. Did uh, 